Hey, what's up? John McMillan, C Store Secrets in my car again. And today I want to talk to you about recruiting. And I've made a video for my private members just discussing uh, recruiting just a little bit. Uh, but it's a hot topic. It keeps coming up over and over again. You know, it's the number one issue that probably most C Store owners have when it comes to just operations in general, but especially food service, finding good health. So the one thing I am noticing is I would say almost nobody is recruiting employees whatsoever. Nobody. And, you know, I was talking to some, some reps from some distributors that are uh, uh, customers of mine, and, you know, we were going through these issues, and actually some of the reps that I was talking to uh, formerly worked in convenience stores and had the same issues, finding good help. And so I, I want to give you this information uh, and, you know, when you go to, if you ever go to Discovery Days with PFS Brands, it's even something they talk about, but where are most employees at right now? Like when you think about good workers, when you think about workers who are going to be loyal, just good workers, and I may have talked about this on other videos, but I, I really want to emphasize the importance of it. When you talk and think about great good employees that could be out there in the marketplace, do you think they already have a job, A, or B, do you think they need a job? They're sitting at home or they're out on the job market looking for a job. Which one do you think? And just so that I don't hold this up or stump you or anything, the answer is they are working. And that's where recruiting comes in. Now, well, there's a good chance that if you start recruiting, you're going to find some people out on the market that don't have a job but are good workers, and it just so happens that they've had some unfortunate events like COVID, and they got laid off, and they've been unemployed for a while waiting for this COVID to pass, and so they're still on the job market. That's possible. So there are some good workers out there potentially that aren't working. But I would say over 90% of your great, good and great employees that you could potentially hire literally are working somewhere. You know, I've talked about this in a lot of videos, a lot of videos. There are some great employees at a lot of fast food restaurants. As you start recruiting, that's something you should pay attention to. You know, you need to be testing things in the marketplace. You need to be trying out um, different fast food restaurants, restra you know, whenever you go out into the marketplace and you experience great customer service, the grocery store, pass your card out to that person, give them your contact information, let them know that you like them, that you think that they would make a great employee, you'd love for them to come work for you, and tell them you want to talk to them about hiring them. Now, in order to get a great employee, you also got to remember you got to differentiate yourself. You've got to do some things to draw those people in so that they will come work for you because they may be working in a great, great culture and environment already. So it's not going to be just as simple as go recruit and find good people. You have to also remember this, that when you hire these people, you may have to make um, like separate offerings, separate quotes, separate um, bonus structures, whatever that's different from maybe even people that you already have working for you. I was talking to one of our really good BAs a minute ago, his name's Tony, and he was saying that he's even seen some correlation among good and bad employees based on how much you pay. If you're paying just bare minimum, minimum wage, uh, that employee pool is typically going to be the people that probably are going to work for just a little while and get one check and leave. But if you start paying more, if you get into that eight, nine, and ten dollars where you're paying more than some of the other um, minimum wage locations, what you'll find is, is as you pay more money, the pool of in the type of people that you are trying to recruit and bring in as employees will actually go up. Um, you know, there's this saying among entrepreneurs and business people and just people who are self-help growth people that you become like the five people you hang around the most. And I think that same thing is evident 
and even how you pay. I mean, you attract the type of people that you pay. If you pay pennies, you're going to get penny workers. Uh, it's just kind of that simple. Um, but my point is there, sorry about that. My point is, is that if you're going to start recruiting and you're going to eliminate your hiring issues that you potentially have, you've got to do something differently. You've got to think outside the box. And that's what recruiting is going to do for you. Recruiting is an outside the box thing. Um, if you're not doing it, you need to start doing it. I've got this other strategy that I shared with somebody in the in my Sea Store Secrets members area that will actually help you even when you're not hiring to get some good people. Um, and I, you know, I'll share that strategy with you in my members area if you decide to get in there. But my point is, is this one simple strategy of recruiting can literally, literally change your hiring game to a whole different ball game. That's all you got to do is go recruit great workers because they are out there but you got to be willing you got to be willing to hire people that already have a job and compete in that market space does that make sense so just want to share that thought with you for the day hopefully this helps you gives you an idea there are great employees out there you just got to go find them